Let's welcome Acting Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security back with us is Ken Cuccinelli. Ken, it's great to have you back on. First, your take on Trump's action? Well, I'm, I'm excited about it. Look, I'm a former State Attorney General, Department of Homeland Security. I'm, I couldn't be more enthusiastic about the president's press for law and order and, frankly, his restraint. You know, uh, he pushed Governor Evers in Wisconsin when Kenosha was getting violent and the governor uh, held back. But more violence convinced the governor the president was right. And once that request came in, cooperation flooded to Kenosha. And what have you had since then? Peace. Peace. And that's all this president wants in all of these cities is peace. And it's achievable. And it isn't even that hard to do. Um, it's, it's law enforcement 101. Portland refuses to do it. Others yeah. have refused as well. And I think taking their money is an extremely appropriate way to, uh, to create some accountability for the political class, not the poor f folks who yeah, suffer the damage up, and the looting. Right. It sets up a constitutional power of the purse fight with Congress. The Democrat mayors, though, they're now threatening to sue. Here's the big story here. They're saying to Trump, our cities are not your political pawns, but city residents are saying to these mayors, we're not your political pawns either. When you right. acted like you were the mayors of only Democrat voters and protesters, you represent all of us. You disregarded our cries for help as our businesses and our communities were torched and burned down. Dozens have died, 32 now dead in the rioting. And now New York Mayor Bill de Blasio again blames coronavirus for the violent chaos. Here's the thing. New Yorkers here keep saying, stop with the grandstanding. Both you and Andrew Cuomo, de Blasio, you and Andrew Cuomo, cut yeah. it out. New Yorkers are hurting. They need tourism. They need money to help what's going on here. So they've been grandstanding for months now, threatening Trump. Uh, you know, now Cuomo's saying you better have an army if you think you're going to walk down the street in New York. No one in New York is talking about that, that anecdotally. They're saying what Cuomo is saying is not true. Your reaction? Right. It, it isn't true. And both de Blasio and Cuomo did a terrible job uh, on COVID. And, are, and uh, you know, so to blame that... Is a, is a poor reflection on their own management and leadership. It, it, it's silly. Uh, you know, everybody else isn't getting violent because uh, across America because of COVID. We're all pulling together and we're taking responsible steps to try to make it less likely to spread. Why, why is New York so different? It isn't. But when you cut 25 percent out of your police budget, um, you, you get rid of more than a thousand officers in a, at a time when your crime is increasing and you've got this street violence, well, what do you think is going to happen? More violence, and that's what they're getting out of it. It's a terrible place for people to be you living know, right now. Residents of these cities keep saying, stop fighting with Trump, get the money, work with them, fix the cities. You did nothing but grandstand and denounce right. Trump. And, you know, de Blasio, Cuomo, Durkin, and Wheeler, you don't represent just the Democrat Party. You re represent all the people in your own city. They need help now. They need the, to That's fix right. the problems and move on. I mean, people don't, people don't want the mob violence. Monmouth, the new poll, shows that now it's a dead-even race between uh, Trump and Biden, statistically tied in Pennsylvania. Six most competitive districts now going Republican. Uh, Trump won Pennsylvania in 2016. Here's a question for you. We got the Republic Attorney, Republican Attorneys General Association saying these mayors are violating their oaths of office, office not defending all of the residents of their city in favor of a political agenda, and that's dangerous. They're politicizing rioting and they're politicizing looting. And this we've never seen before in this country. Yes, Your are. reaction? Yeah, and they're politicizing law enforcement. You have a situation where people like uh, the mayor of Portland, Ted Wheeler, the governor of Oregon, Governor Brown, they hate President Trump more than they love the people of Portland and of Oregon. And, you, and, and I can prove it. I can prove it because they have tools in their hands they're unwilling to use to keep the people of their own city safe, all the while trying to blame the president. But I trust the wisdom of the American people to see through that, to see that the president has been the vo loudest voice for law and order and peace in these cities, cities that won't vote for him, didn't vote for him. But the, he still wants peace there. He still wants prosperity there. And these Local public leaders, whether it's Wheeler, de Blasio or Governor Brown, uh, they are the ones who are abandoning their constituents, sacrificing their constituents to try to create an argument to attack the president with. And it isn't working. 
You know, if Trump was really stoking the violence again, again, and again, we're going to ask why didn't they bring it up at the Democrat convention? They never said a word about that. You know, people Not don't once. want to see a 17-year-old. They don't want to see a, people don't want to see a 17-year-old walking around with an assault rifle in Kenosha, Wisconsin, unimpeded. They don't want to see uh, violent mobs running around with guns unimpeded either. I want to take you to the news about protests uh, that were set to take place today in upstate New York and Rochester after the release of a video showing the arrest of Daniel Prude. A 41-year-old black man died by asphyxiation in March. This is before George Floyd was killed. Rochester police put a hood over his head while he was on the, gr on the ground, handcuffed and naked. Again, this happened before George Floyd was killed. Sir, your reaction, Rochester City Council in upstate New York calling for them to be, the cops to be put on administrative leave, uh, criminal investigation, uh, New York Attorney General is looking into it, the families call for the officers to be fired. Uh, how do we stop this problem? Well, it, there's a couple of problems going on here. First of all, you've got to let um, the, the proper arm of government do the investigation and not jump to conclusions. Americans have been kind of conditioned by media to want an immediate answer. We're going to convict this person now. We're going to try him in the media and so forth. And that isn't the way good investigations happen. Good investigations are thorough, they're methodical, and they're truth-focused. They don't seek particular outcomes. And when you have a city council voting on an outcome um, with respect to police officers, they're trying to be judge, jury, and prosecutor all by themselves. And that does not create a fairer system for either the police, nor does it create a proper review of the circumstances of any particular incident that we may want to learn from and adjust how we do policing going forward. All right. Ken Cuccinelli, Secretary, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Good to be with you, Elizabeth.